Hi, I'm Valentin. I'm a fifth year PhD student at EPFL, and today I'm going to present our work on distribution inference risks. This is joint work with Leo, Maxime, and Bob from EPFL, Dimitrios from Amazon, and Scuti from Microsoft. Okay, so what is distribution inference? In machine learning, the process of training a model consists of two steps. First, Data is sampled from some underlying distribution, and then a model is trained on this training data set. In the more well-known setting of membership inference, which we also saw this morning in the tutorial, one is concerned with learning, ex uh, learning information about individual training records um, in the training data set via access to the model. In distribution inference, the adversary is concerned with the training distribution. So they want to learn properties of this underlying distribution. To make this more concrete, I'll give you two examples. In the first example, we have a company that um, uses the data generated by its users um, to train a machine learning model on this merged data set. So, for example, you could um, have a company like what we've also seen this morning, Google, who um, wants to train an extrovert prediction model and uses the messages typed by its users on their Android phones. Now, you might have an adversary with access to the model. So, the adversary could simply be an Android user um, that is interested in learning information about the population that contributed the training data. So if this adversary is a, it's a competitor of Google, they might be interested in demographic features of the population of their competitor in order to run targeted ads. It's another example, you can consider an e-commerce company that runs an, e, uh, an online shop and wants to build a recommender system which uses with sales data. A competing e-commerce company might now be interested in learning which products are the most popular in their competitors' online shop in order to sell these products themselves. And again, this is a property of the training distribution. To formally reason about the problem, we formalized this as a cryptographic game between the trainer on one hand and the adversary on the other hand. We have a set of distribution properties R and in the first step, the trainer samples one of these properties from the uniform distribution of all properties. This then gives the trainer a training distribution DR from which it samples training data set D and uses this to train a model M. M is then handed over to the adversary and the adversary tries to use its access to M to infer the distributional property R. This is a slightly extended version of a game by um, Suri and Evans who will present their paper right after me. Um, we need a little more notation. Um, so to simplify things in this talk, I will only consider binary setting where there are only two possible training distributions, D0 on one hand and D1 on the other hand. The model trainer now picks one of those two distributions um, indicated by the superscript B, which is either zero or one, trains the model on this. And so the model here tries to learn the expected label given the features. The adversary has access to the model and tries to learn the bit B. The literature usually considers two settings. There's the white box setting where the adversary has access to the model parameters and the black box setting where the adversary only has free access to the model. Now this idea of distribution inference has been around for 10 years now. 
and there have been a couple of papers on this problem. But essentially, all of these papers only develop attacks. So by now, you can uh, successfully attack all kinds of different model architectures. However, what's missing is an understanding of why those attacks work and also uh, principled mitigation strategies. With our work, we try to fill this gap. So first, we identify the sources of distribution leakage, um, which are the reasons why those attacks work. Then we use those insights to develop defenses. And finally, we show a connection between distribution inference and membership inference. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, the last point won't be covered in this talk, but I'm happy to chat about it offline. An important distinction that we'll make in the following is whether the function that the model trainer tries to learn differs between D0 and D1 or not. Um, we'll see in a bit while this, why this is important. Um, and the way I'll proceed is that for all of the cases that I consider, I will uh, first give you a proof by example that in this case, distribution leakage can happen. So I'll give you a concrete data generation mechanism and a concrete model where an adversary can have an advantage of uh, random guessing. And then I'll show you in experiments that not only optimal adversaries have this advantage, but also practical adversaries that use the text from the literature. We would start with a case where the two functions that the model trainer learns differ. In this case, it's um, maybe not so surprising that distribution leakage happens. Uh, we can see this formally by considering a data generation mechanism where the expected label given the features is given by some parametric function f. Since we want the conditional expectations to differ, we need the parameters of this function to differ between um, D0 and D1. Now we consider a correctly specified model, so a model that has the capacity to learn F. Um, and now if our estimator for the parameters of this model is consistent, meaning that with increasing the amount of data, it converges to the true parameter vector, then this parameter vector will converge to beta B. Um, and as we've seen before, this differs between the two distributions, so the adversary can simply weed off the train distribution from this parameter. We perform experiments for this setting where we model F as a neural network with random weights. And then we vary how much these weights differ um, between distribution D0 and distribution D1. This difference is measured by epsilon, so the larger epsilon is, um, the larger the difference. As we can see here in the plots on the right, the larger this difference is, the more successful distribution inference attacks are, which uh, maybe is not surprising. Now, in the second case where the conditional expectations are the same, things are a bit more interesting because here, a perfect model that precisely learns the expected uh, label won't leak any information about its training distribution because the function that it would learn when training when trained on data from D0 um, would be the same as when trained on data from D1. However, in practice, we still observe distribution leakage. This means that this distribution leakage needs to result from imperfections in the model. And there are two possible types of imperfections. The first one is wrong inductive bias, meaning uh, wrong model architecture, uh, 
wrong um, training algorithm, wrong data pre-processing that don't 100% agree with the data generation mechanism. As an example, we um, consider data um, where the marginal distribution of the features differs between D0 and D1. Um, so here it's just a one dimension example. So for D1, D0, the expectation is zero and for D1, it's one. The expected label given the features is the same in both cases. And for simplicity here, it's just equal to the feature value. Now we want to have an incorrectly specified model. And so here we do this by simply having a constant model that always outputs the same label, no matter the features. Now, if we minimize mean squared error, mean average error, then the model will learn to always output B, which is exactly the uh, value that our adversary tries to learn. So again, the adversary can just look at the model parameter and see which was the training distribution. In experiments, in order to um, induce a wrong inductive bias, so to get models with different levels of fit, we always train a model with the same architecture, but we perform early stopping at pre-specified training hours. On the y-axis here, you don't see accuracy, but this time mean average error. Um, which means that the smaller the value, the more successful the attack is. And in accordance with our theory, we see that the worse the model fits the data, the better the attacks work. Finally, the second reason why models may be imperfect is because of sampling error. Here's an example. We can consider data where the feature variance of D0 is smaller than the feature variance of D1. And the expected label given the features is the same as in our previous example. Now, this time we consider a correctly specified model. So in principle, the model can learn the correct function, but we assume that we only have a finite amount of training data. And because of the difference in the variance of the features, the variance of our estimator or the model parameter will also differ. So for D0, we'll have a smaller variance than for D1. And this gives an adversary an advantage over random guessing. We can perform experiments. Here we simply vary the number of samples. And as we would expect, the larger our training set is, the worse the distribution inference attacks work. Now we've seen um, and identified all these different sources of leakage. And natural next question is how to turn these insights into principled defenses against distribution inference. <coughs> In the case that I considered last, so where the conditional expectations are the same between D0 and D1, um, things are nice because here the goals of bending against distribution inference attacks and having good model fit are aligned. So here we can simply work on a better model, specific, uh, model specification or obtain more training data. In the case where the conditional expectations differ, we are in the exact opposite situation. So as we see here in the experiments that we've performed for this case, the worse the model fits the data, the worse distribution inference attacks works. So this means that um, if we want to defend against distribution inference attacks, we have to reduce our model fit, which is usually not what ML engineers want. What do we do with this? 
there are some cases where reduced model fit is a side effect of obtaining some other desirable property. Usually this is generalization. And um, if you perform regularization or employ causal learning methods, then usually the fit on the training data will reduce, but hopefully for this, you get better generalization capabilities. If you perform such methods, then what may happen is that the prediction of your model will depend on a smaller set of features. In this case, the chance that these expected labels, given the features this time, the features that the model actually uses for its prediction um, differs um, will be reduced. And so we see potential um, in such methods for defending against distribution inference attacks, even in this nasty case where the expected labels differ. To conclude, we've identified the different sources of distribution leakage, which are differences in the learned condition expectation, a wrong inductive bias, and the finiteness of the training data. We then used these insights to derive principled mitigation strategies, um, which hopefully spark future work on fences. In the future, what would be my dream would be to have some kind of formal guarantee similar to what we have with differential privacy against membership inference attacks, because so far all of the work, um, both on attacks and on defenses, is just heuristic, at least for um, for real world problems. And so, if we could get to a point where we have some kind of form guarantees, I think uh, this would be super helpful. Finally, you find here my email address to contact me. I'll graduate by the end of this year, and then I'll be on the job market. Thank you, and I'm open to questions.